Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide Bedrock Edition. I hope everyone's having a great day. Today I have started off by doing a little bit of work off camera, getting this settlement a little bit more organized. I've got some tree farming on the go, we've got lots of spruce wood, I've got some wheat growing so I can breed some more cows for bookshelves, and in here I got lucky. I have three zombie villagers who pack spawned overnight, and knowing what I know from Silent Whisperer's tutorials, by the way, if you guys don't watch Silent Whisperer, fantastic bedrock Minecraft YouTuber, player on the Truly Bedrock server, as, along with a bunch of great tutorials, he recently put out a video in which he explained that despawning mobs on Bedrock happens thanks to player-placed light levels. So if you end up putting a torch in here with these zombie villagers, they might actually end up despawning where they wouldn't if they are kept completely in the dark. This is one of the things that affects Bedrock Edition mob spawners and, and stuff like farms that you would potentially build on Java Edition, but we can use that to our advantage here, keeping these zombie villagers around, even if we walk away to what I would normally consider to be despawning distance. So, I'm going to make myself a few splash potions of weakness and some golden apples, and we are going to cure these villagers and keep them over here in some little trading stalls if we possibly can. So, I guess with the brewing stand and stuff over here, there is no better time to have a go at curing these zombie villagers and getting ourselves the zombie doctor achievement. For that, of course, we all need to make a fermented spider eye. We'll just need to pop that in here with the brewing stand. I've already got these brewed up into awkward potions, so we shouldn't need to worry too much about that, even though you don't need nether wart for this recipe at all. Meanwhile, while I do have a fair amount of gold thanks to a little bit of mining and a few encounters with the drowned, so that should be enough for a few apples, provided that I have apples. I think, yeah, I've got at least one in here. Okay, well, one is a good start and I can farm a few more oak trees if I want to get more, I suppose. I'm also going to see if I can do what I do in Java Edition and move these guys around using minecarts. Uh, hopefully this will work. Let's grab a few rails here and at least one minecart to move them around and we'll try and get them out from the corner of this little section over here. I don't know for certain if this is going to work or not, and of course, the wandering trader is here. He basically never leaves at this point. I don't know if it's possible to grab a mob out of the corner like it is on Java Edition. Oh yeah, it is, fantastic. Okay, I'm glad that works the same way then. I needed to separate these folks out because a zombie villager, when it's being cured, can potentially be attacked by other zombies, so we really don't want them to have contact with each other while they're doing this. And I think just creating a little booth here for him to go in. Wow, okay. <laughs> He's just moving over there of his own accord, apparently. Fair enough. A little bit of pushing around later. They're all set up in their curing booths, ready to be cured individually without having contact with each other. So I guess the next thing to do is actually get some apples. So far, I've managed to get two golden apples, and that should be enough to at least get this process started. I'm going to splash between these two villagers on the left-hand side, give them each a golden apple, and then we We'll aim to cure the third one at a later date, but for now, it will really be quite useful to get villager curing on the go, so hopefully, if we stick around, these two will turn back into villagers and we'll be able to give them whatever professions we want. And that sounds like they have cured. Perfect. Okay, one of them seems to already want to be a cleric, and this guy here... Uh, oh, has a farmer profession. Interesting. Having a farmer around is not going to be such a bad thing after all, and we could always trade a little bit of gold, a little bit of rotten flesh with the cleric. It's worth noting, of course, that they aren't giving us any discounts on these trades, and that seems to be because the gossip system that is present in Java Edition that encourages villagers to give you discounts is not present at all in Bedrock Edition, so we are going to have to do a little bit of work here to get the achievement for getting a trade at the lowest possible price. But now having broken the brewing stand, I'm not sure if this guy is going to turn back from a cleric into an unemployed villager or if he might immediately decide to become a farmer. It doesn't seem like he really wants to do either of those things, so I'm not quite certain how this works. Looks like I won't be able to get that rail back from behind him quite yet though. Uh, let's see, should we put in a little bit of protection here? I think we probably should. Let's get some fences up around him. And in the meantime, we can work on farming a little bit more oak to get ourselves our third golden apple and cure that last guy, who, judging by my estimations, will probably become a farmer based on the amount of farmland that's around here, but maybe we can convince him to be something else. And while the grind for diamonds continues, I have managed to get myself a full chest of cobblestone. So we're going to put this last stack in here. As soon as that fills up with a full 27 stacks of 64 cobblestone, the achievement chest full of cobblestone should be activated. 
And there it is. By the way, I had a quick look back through my achievements here, and for whatever reason, the renewable energy achievement for smelting wood to make charcoal does not seem to be here. So I'm not entirely sure what's bugged about that, but it does seem to be bugged. Maybe I have to use stripped wood or perhaps even bark blocks or something like that. This is oak wood rather than oak logs. So maybe we'll give that a try. But yeah, all I know is for whatever reason, that achievement wasn't working the first time around. And I can't even cook oak wood. So <laughs> I'm, I'm at a loss at this point. I'm really not sure what's going on there. Now while we are between tasks and doing some more of the grindy stuff, there are a couple more simple achievements that we can pick off. For a start, if I grab the saddle back off of this horse and we give it to the pig, we can end up getting the When Pigs Fly achievement. For that, of course, it will help to create another fishing rod so that we can produce a carrot on a stick because you need to lead a pig off a cliff. Come back, piggy, come back. Here we go. All right, now let's see if we can ride this guy up to maybe the tree line over there and we should find a tree that we're able to climb up onto and then drop off the side of. It needs to be a, a drop of five blocks or more, so anything that was gonna cause fall damage to yourself or the pig. I imagine climbing off this birch tree will probably do. Yep, there we go. Okay, full damage to the pig achieved. And hopefully that means the achievement has popped as well. Yep, there we go. Looks like we got that one. Now I'm just going to ride this pig back into the pen to safety. There we go. Fantastic stuff. I'll bring him another carrot. There you go, little friend. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me ride you off a tree. I promise not to do it again. And there's a donkey over here. Brilliant. We will need to bring this one back over to the horse stable because I kind of need to breed a donkey and a horse together. Uh, the cow can follow us too, I suppose. And the donkey's going to give us a little bit of trouble taming so I only brought a couple of wheat for it but a couple of attempts and we should be able to tame the donkey and breeding it with the horse will get us a mule. Let's just lead it back over there since I only have the one saddle right now and the pig is staying saddled for the time being. Now I'm pretty sure that in order to breed, I haven't done this for ages, you need uh, a couple of golden carrots, one for the horse, one for the donkey and uh, I should have plenty of carrots over here in the field. There we go, two gold carrots, one for you and one for you. Let's see if we get ourselves a mule. Looks like a mule to me and that gets you the achievement artificial selection for breeding a mule from a horse and a donkey. I would also like to start an egg farm, not least because we need eggs for the cake achievement, the lie, so I will need to get a chest, I will need to get a hopper, and I'll need to put this chicken in a hole with the hopper so that it can continue to lay eggs. So the egg farm is just going to be a hopper outputting into a barrel, but I am going to make it a little bit more secure than I normally would, just because we're quite close to a jungle and ocelots might come down here and kill the chicken if they can get into the top, which I don't really want to happen. So let's take this chicken off the lead, let's lead it into here, just fill that in around the top and add in a trapdoor, and I guess we might as well put a light in there so the chicken stays down there. All right, uh, I think we're good. And the first thing that should pop into that barrel is the lead because I had to break that by running away. I also want to work on the rainbow collection achievement, which you get for getting all 16 colors of sheep wool. Now, I could, of course, stick around with this one sheep and dye it a bunch of different colors, but apparently it's quite rare to find squid in Bedrock Edition right now, so squid ink and black dye is going to be a bit of a problem. Also, wither roses aren't in this version yet, so alternative sources of black dye are going to be scarce. There are some places, some structures in the world where wool can be found naturally, and one of those is villages. Now, we're not gonna find black wool here, but we are, I believe, going to find some yellow wool on the little kind of town center stalls down here. So we could take that, of course, and that would mean we wouldn't have to worry about getting the yellow wool and, oh, a baby cat. But there are plenty of other sources of dye, including the flowers that are growing out here on the plains. So I'm gonna grab a few corn flowers. Even though we've got yellow, we will also need orange. So let's grab a couple of dandelions and poppies as well. And we got ourselves a trident. <laughs> hey, amazing stuff. That was a random drown that was in this pool of water and happened to drop a trident. Brilliant, okay, well, we'll need to enchant that with Riptide later, and we'll also need a channeling trident too, so we can get charged creepers. The only other color we can't really get from around here is green, because that requires cactus. So we're gonna have to go and find a desert in order to get that, and I have a feeling we'll probably have to do a fair amount of exploring. A lot of the exploring is probably going to happen off camera, but it might end up with me getting the adventuring time achievement. So that is one that's gonna be fairly self-explanatory. You've just got to explore the world a whole bunch, find lots of different landscapes, different biomes, and eventually the achievement is gonna pop for you. Now our friend the chicken has given us an egg or two, we can finally get the achievement for making a cake. I'll need to grab some sugar out of here, which I think I even got from some witches, but we got plenty of sugar cane nearby as well. Oh, <laughs> I had an egg in there, never mind. Okay, we need to get three buckets of milk though. Is it two sugar and one egg you need? Yeah, it does seem to be. It says eggs 
plural in the achievements, so that's kind of throwing me off a little bit. I always thought you needed two eggs when in fact you only needed one, but never mind, that is cake. We have made it. The lie is real, and I will probably put that um, here, I guess, next to the bookshelves. Hey folks, welcome back. So I've been playing here basically most of today and a lot of stuff has happened. None of it necessarily pertains to the achievements, but I thought I would catch you up a little bit on my progress. So as you can see, I have myself a diamond fortune 3 pickaxe that now has mending thanks to a villager who I just basically re-rolled a lectern about 300 times I, I went through an entire iron axe and then a little bit of extra durability on a new iron axe until finally he came up with a mending trade so I'm now able to trade mending books with him provided that I have enough emeralds it's about uh, 24 emeralds per book so it's not super cheap but it's enough it's enough to get me a mending book at least so I've been slowly putting together a set of decently enchanted diamond tools and gear. I've got myself a looting 2 smite 3 sword. I've got another one of those in here with unbreaking and fire aspect. I've got myself a silk touch and efficiency shovel which is absolutely great. I have a trident that now only has riptide 3 but that should be enough to get another achievement in a bit here. I have a few pieces of enchanted diamond armor and some diamond boots that I'm waiting to get a decent enchantment on in the table because right now it's only giving me fire protection. I kind of want regular protection and we have ourselves the depth strider and feather falling book in here that I fished up a little while ago so we can always use that if we need to. I've been to and from the nether gathering supplies for when we inevitably have to find the end later in this episode and I got myself not only a handful of blaze rods from a nearby blaze spawner which will provide more than enough what we need for the uh, the eyes of ender that we'll need to find the stronghold but also fortuitously enough thanks to looting two on this sword two wither skeleton skulls from back to back wither skeletons so we got one and then immediately as i was leaving the nether with one wither skeleton skull I got another one, so I'm quite happy about that. The third will probably be a little bit harder to get, but I had a thought about some of this, which is, if you look at the achievement list, there is one achievement on here that sounds like it's going to be more difficult than it actually is, because the achievement down here at the bottom says, Camouflage, kill a mob while wearing the same type of mob head, and you think, okay, the picture on that is a zombie head, I guess I'm going to have to like get charged creepers, and have a charged creeper kill a mob, and then kill one of that type of mob again, but no, of course not, you just have to take a wither skeleton skull and bash a wither skeleton while you're wearing it, so I'm going to head back into the nether right now to do that. And as luck would have it, my helmet just ran out of durability a short while ago, so that's basically the ideal time to get this achievement done. While we are there, we might get the achievement for swimming in lava with a fire resistance potion, because that's also one we have to take into account while we're in the nether. I mean, I guess you could get that in the overworld, but the nether seems like the obvious place to do it, and also the place where having a fire resistance potion might just save my bacon. Especially considering the amount of ghasts that are floating around near the entrance to the nether fortress, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of ducking and diving here. Yep, there we go, okay. We're in, let's find a wither skeleton. Oh, we've got a couple more diamonds in a loot chest over here as well. As luck would have it, wither skeleton spawns do seem to be pretty common here in the nether fortresses, and I imagine we'll be able to find one just around that corner where you can see the sword poking out. Yes, there we go, okay. Well, let's do this the cheesy way if we can. I can hear him walking around. I'm a little bit confused here, but... Hopefully we should be able to just make a nice easy safety bar like so take care of his skeleton cousin here And there we go right around the corner. There's one fantastic give him a couple of quick taps with the smite sword and He's done amazing stuff Well, hopefully that will be enough to trigger the achievement now One thing I should also point out is that this smite three sword is actually pretty darn powerful against the undead. In fact, it is so powerful that off camera I was able to get the overkill achievement for dealing nine hearts of damage in a single hit. So that is almost the full life bar of something like a skeleton or a zombie. I may even have ended up one-shotting a skeleton for that advancement to, uh, to, to pop. And there we go. You can see we got the camouflage achievement there for killing a mob while wearing the same type of mob head. So really, it is that simple. It's, it's the mob that most commonly drops its own head. So that's kind of an easy win, really. Unfortunately, that wither skeleton didn't drop his skull, uh, which would have been the last one we needed to summon the wither, so uh, I guess we'll have to wait to do that, but uh, I might try and get a, another wither skeleton skull or two while we're here 
in the nether and i got pretty lucky with this fortress as it goes it's actually a pretty big one and we have plenty of crossroads and little junctions here where the wither skeletons are going to spawn quite frequently there we go we can run back through this way there's a blaze spawner just around the corner over here as well so that's a nice easy hunting ground for blaze powder as long as you've got some yes there we go with the skull number three amazing luck we've had with just a looting two sword there we go and yeah the blaze spawn has been perfect for getting blaze powder for eyes of ender a potion of fire resistance is really all you need to make sure blazes can't harm you all that much and i wonder if the wither skeleton skull drop rate is a little bit better on bedrock than it is on java edition because goodness me that did not take a fraction of the time it took me to get wither skeleton skulls earlier on in the survival guide series so let's make it back to the nether portal but then let's go through to the other side and see if we can find a nice straightforward place to swim in lava where we're not also going to have to deal with ghasts and other nasties around us this little lava river seems as good a spot as any let's sip our fire resistance potion make sure we've got that effect and i learned today that you can press z to bring up this potions hud and find out what effects you have instead of looking at them in the menu here where they are not displayed at all so good to know that the timer is actually there on the screen and let's go for a dip <laughs> there we go that should be enough i will go for a swim a little bit around here and it doesn't look like we can enter the kind of swimming animation in here at all but uh well the ghasts are shooting at me so that's not exactly ideal but it looks like they won't be able to do all that much damage to us if they're just setting me on fire and that should be all we need to get the delightfully named staying frosty achievement for just swimming in lava while we have the fire resistance potion in effect one other thing i'm very happy about from my little time off camera is that my bow now has infinity so i don't have to worry at all about using arrows my ideal setup right now having an infinity bow i've also got a pretty large melon and pumpkin farm in progress over here i'm just trying to grow these up as best i can and gather a ton of melon slices manually for now potentially redstone powered when we can but melon slices are going to be a great resource for trading with farmers as some of the farmers over at the village over there will trade you four melon slices for an emerald and as you can see we can gather those in large quantities and hopefully melons and pumpkins and some of the other crops that we can grow around here are going to carry us through that really tough achievement for getting a thousand emeralds traded. So I'm going to put my other winnings from the nether in here. We've got three wither skeleton skulls now, so that means we can summon the wither anytime we want to. Of course, the wither on bedrock has a reputation for being a little bit tough, so I think we might even head to the end first, which is going to mean getting some more ender pearls and turning these into eyes of ender the better to locate the stronghold for right now though i am going to try and kill two birds with one stone and hopefully not kill myself in the process because we've got ourselves a slime block thanks to an encounter with a large slime in a cave and that should be all we need to complete another achievement for getting uh, a 30 block high bounce using a slime block uh, now that's going to require us to go basically up as high as we can in the world and then drop down onto this slime block in particular and i'm going to put it out here in the middle of the lake so that i have a chance to fall in the water if i don't hit the slime block directly hopefully that should be enough room around the outside that we don't end up hitting a block by mistake and it should give us a nice high bounce at the same time, I'm going to try and complete the achievement for placing scaffolding to build height. But one of the things people have been telling me in the comments since the first episode of this week is that you can just pillar up with any other block and then place scaffolding at the topmost block on the stack. So what I think I might try and do is, uh, yeah, get up to probably around Y200 and something and then finish the rest of the tower with scaffolding. It really seems like the obvious thing to do to just pillar up in front of this slime block and then walk off of it straight in front of us, land on the slime block and bounce up to get the other achievement from there. So uh, I'm gonna pillar up to build height and I'll see you guys there. And what a view from up here. While I'm up here, I honestly couldn't resist pushing the render distance of Bedrock Edition to its limits and seeing as far as we could see. Is that a mesa out there in the distance? I can see some ice biomes and stuff around here as well. And boy, uh, my frames have taken a bit of a dip, let me tell you. But there is tons of stuff out there to explore and we can see so much of it from up here but the main thing we want to see is that slime block at the bottom of this tower the tower is now at build height we have scaffolding at the top of the world and hopefully that should have triggered the achievement uh we're staying frosty we don't have the achievement for the scaffolding quite yet but i'm sure that will pop in a couple of seconds and for now it's time to see if we can hit that slime block so let's try and stay as close to the tower as we can and boing yeah there we go fantastic that should slow us down to 
a small enough bounce that I can step off this thing safely. There we go, just hold space on the block and we're fine. And now I have a giant dirt tower to build height that I need to take down. Speaking of things I need to take down, I have taken my render distance back down because, oh boy, I have a decent computer and that was getting jittery up there for a bit. <laughs> okay, I've upped the render distance again. It occurs to me that I probably should have made this entire tower out of sand or gravel or something that was affected by gravity because I had to peel it all the way back up here to take it down again. But look, I found a pillager watchtower out there over the mountains. That'll be a perfect place to find a pillager captain to trigger a raid somewhere around here for when we need to do that. There is another village over here kind of nestled into the mountains. There is one more out here in the tiger, which I have already found and explored, and it didn't seem like there were any villagers there before. So uh, yeah, kind of have to see what's going on there. Uh, out there, that's actually a extreme hills biome, a mountain biome, not a mesa. Now that I've zoomed in my FOV a little bit, I can see that, but there are some lovely little islands here and there, and I was trying to see if I could spot an ocean temple, and I think there might be one over there in that little patch of ocean. We do need to explore several different ocean biomes for another achievement later, so chances are we might be doing a fair amount of exploring of this little patch over here before long. But frankly, the view from up here is so nice that I might actually stay up here until the sun rises, get a nice screenshot for the thumbnail of this video, and then head down and make some preparations to go find the stronghold. Now, as part of the great trading challenge that we have in this series, it's also worth noting that the cleric villagers can sell you ender pearls, which is kind of perfect, although I'm not certain that you need to hang on to each of the emeralds that you acquire through trades. If you do, then that's a bit more of a problem, but if you don't, then we should be able to buy a few ender pearls if we want to. They are five emeralds each right now, which is pretty expensive, but we should be able to get this guy up to level four, and then hopefully at that point we can start buying ender pearls off of him if none of the endermen are willing to come out at night and get killed for their ender pearls. But I think we have a nice wide open area here, so hopefully we should get a few endermen spawning when the sun goes fully down. In fact, there's one right there. I'm going to see if I can lure him over here. Looks like he is going to get mad at me, and let's see if we can dig our way down here. Yes, there we go. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Come on down. There we go. Yes, that's a good haul. Two ender pearls for the price of one. Not bad. Not bad. We'll have to uh, continue to use this sword for its looting two purposes, and we should actually get a couple of ender pearls faster than it would be likely to get them when we traded with a cleric. <laughs> yes! I've just managed to cure myself another zombie villager. It seems like their professions are fixed, and I'm having real trouble getting these guys to recognize the workstations in front of them to reset their trades. But this guy is a Fletcher, which means we can just trade him sticks. And I've farmed tons of wood so far, so this is absolutely perfect. I'll grab a ton of sticks and make sure I can trade them with this guy. This would be a really good trade to capitalize on if we needed to. There's one more that we can get overnight here, and it's an absolute classic, and that's shooting a skeleton from over 50 blocks away. Unfortunately, right now, he's on the opposite side of my villagers, so I'm going to have to aim high and hope that I miss them. Yeah, okay. Uh, looks like my, I overshot by quite some distance there. I don't actually know whether I'm 50 blocks away or not. And to be honest, the best way of doing this, the way I always used to do it in the past, was to pillar up 50 blocks and then shoot downwards. Because then you could be basically guaranteed to shoot the thing that you were aiming at pretty easily. All you'd have to do is aim downwards. And it's a lot easier to measure 50 blocks if you, put, if you pillar upwards first. But I think... I don't know, that might be 50 blocks away, I can't quite tell. I guess we'll know whether or not we uh, get it if we get the achievement. And in the meantime, I could always take a few more pot shots at some other skeletons nearby. There we go, you can tell you've hit them because they're on fire. And that confirms it, we got at least one of those from more than 50 meters away. So a block is a meter, 50 meters is 50 blocks. Pretty self-explanatory. But with that, we have passed the halfway mark. We are at 52 of 103 achievements, 50% complete. Halfway there, folks. And I think I might try celebrating that by jumping for joy because another one of the achievements we can get here is to fling yourself using Riptide. Doesn't matter how far you fling yourself as long as you fling yourself. So I'm just going to hop into the middle of the lake here, point myself up at the sky and leap. And that should count. And the achievement for that one is called do a barrel roll. So I sort of feel like we should do it again and show you guys why it's called that. To do that, of course, we'll have to be in third person first, but yep, that's definitely why it's called that. Well, I haven't had the best of luck getting Enderman to spawn, and to be honest, the Cleric's prices for Glowstone are a little bit steep. So I figure what I will do 
is do my best to get to the stronghold using the ender pearls that I have and then maybe in tomorrow's episode we'll do a kind of boss rush attempt where I try and take care of the ender dragon, the wither and an ocean monument all in the same episode. But yeah, right now I'm sort of running out of time today to really get the ender dragon stuff done. So at the very least we'll make our way to the stronghold and call it a day there. On the subject of running out of time though, you'll notice that we've been playing for 13 hours which should be roughly 20 hours off of our main goal of playing for 100 Minecraft days, which equates to about 33 hours. However, as we scroll down the list here, you'll see that passing the time to play for 100 days is already over halfway according to this lit up bar here. And what actually that means is that this only counts in-game days. It doesn't necessarily count the total time played, which means on all of those days where I've skipped the night to make it day again, a day still technically passes as far as the game is concerned. So really, we might not actually have to play for a full 30 hours this week. We might get that actually closer to about 24 hours, which is still, you know, a day's worth of playing Minecraft, but hey, at least it's better than 33 hours. So I'm going to skip yet another night, hopefully increase that counter by one, and then I'm going to throw an ender pearl and see which way we need to go to find the stronghold. Now in Bedrock Edition, strongholds should generate within a ring between 640 and 1152 according to the Minecraft wiki. So, okay, we are headed out there through the jungle and hopefully... Yeah, I was afraid of that. And on my way out here to find the stronghold, I've stumbled upon a stroke of luck because right here we have a coral reef. In the coral reef we have some sea pickles and as long as I don't drown, I should be able to collect those and place them for another achievement. The achievement one pickle, two pickle, three pickle, four just requires you to place four sea pickles in a group. It's as simple as that. And it is just now occurring to me that every single Eye of Ender I have thrown has broken. Is that just the norm on Bedrock Edition? Is that what they do? Because I would have got a lot more Ender Pearls if that was the case. Well, <laughs> we actually got one that fell right there. So I've just had absolutely terrible luck this entire time. It does still seem to be pointing in this direction though, and we are like several hundred blocks out from where I expected us to be on that ring that it mentions in the uh, Minecraft wiki, so maybe some stuff has changed. Although the wiki does also say that it tries to position the entrance to strongholds underneath village wells sometimes, and I'm not sure if villagers still have wells anymore with the current design, but I guess the least I can do is try and find a place to sleep in this village for the night and see if any endermen show up. I guess this village does have a well, although right now it seems to be held up by cats. Uh, <laughs> I'll take the fence post out of here so that these cats can roam free again, and I might try digging down underneath here to see if any of that rumor holds true. Well, nope, I have reached the bottom of the world and I do not see a stronghold around here. I do not know if it's going to be behind some of the walls around here or if it's actually going to be further afield. It's a mystery at this point, but I'm going to get myself out of this well. And let's try throwing this Eye of Ender one more time to see which direction it goes. And it's veering a little bit further this way, but... yo, oh, okay, good. <laughs> I was a little bit worried that that was the last we would see of these ones. Let's see if we can get to the top of this hill over here and throw it from there, because we might be able to get a better view of which direction it's traveling from there. Oh my goodness, there's another village on the other side, and <laughs> the geography of this place has meant that it got a little bit divided up here, but... I wonder if it's going to be under the well of this village. Okay, wow, this, <laughs> I think this ravine goes all the way down to diamond level? That's quite the quarry. Got to ignore it though, got to resist the temptation to take a look at it and keep going. We should still be headed out in this direction. Let's take another cast of the ender pearl and see which way it, oh, okay, this is the first time it's really gone in a different direction and we still have it on us, so... Perhaps it is underneath this village after all. And I've got to say the generation of this village is actually really cool. It's up on these hills up here, but there are caves underneath. And oh gosh, the, the villagers are being pursued by a zombie. Better step in here and save them when I can. Clutch, nice. Okay, I think maybe down here there might even be a stronghold. Can you imagine? If the villagers had found the stronghold before I did, that would be ridiculous. All right, if the Eye of Ender thinks the stronghold is over here, then I guess I'd better get digging. I have no idea how far down I need to go or really which direction we need to go at this point but I am trusting that if we dig down a certain amount, the stronghold is going to be here somewhere. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. It was right here underneath this village. I do wonder if this village does have a well <laughs> and the stronghold is underneath there, but look at that. We've made it. We found the stone brick we were looking for and... 
a few mobs besides, but hopefully we can just take care of these and be on our way. Oh, we've dug up right next to the library as well. Incredible. Great stuff. Okay, uh, I will need to establish a nether portal in here somewhere so that I can have an easy bit of transport back to the base. I think I might set up the nether portal here in the library, although I'd probably better set it up near the main portal actually thinking about it but oh the books the books folks i think we will probably try and find a couple of things here oh that's a book right there depth strider as well respiration multi-shot if we didn't have some of these already i would call this an absolute windfall what's up here in this part of the library though we'll have to take that block off so we can see and that silk touch that's projectile protection and channeling flame and piercing not bad not bad at all not to mention being able to take apart all of these books shelves and potentially trade them with the librarian villager for yet more emeralds towards that master trader achievement. Let's take a look around. Let's see if we can find the portal room nice and quickly. Oh, and there are even ender pearls and enchanted books in some of these chests as well. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Let's see. Oh, a diamond in there. Very cool. Very cool. Let's uh, throw some of the rocks and stuff in here just so we can have a bit of inventory space. Since I've got a little bit of cobblestone on me, I'm being a little bit more systematic about how I explore the stronghold this time. And each entrance that I find that does not lead to the portal room, I'm actually going to block off with a cobblestone barrier just so that I can clarify clarify as I'm walking around here that this is not the way to the portal. I hear some silverfish, which probably means the spawner is close. Yes, there it is. We found the end portal and now we get to see precisely how many eyes of ender we need and we need, I guess, 10 more. Okay. Okay, well, that's going to be a task for tomorrow, folks. But like I said, I'm probably going to wrap up this episode here. Spent a lot of time in Minecraft today and made a whole bunch of progress. We are now looking at 52%, 54 out of 103 achievements. Still a lot of progress yet to be made, but I think we can do it, folks. That is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.